Now we're ready to talk about interactive programs. So now our programs can become more exciting. So now we'll be able to prompt the user for information, take that information and do some type of equation or act on that data. And I'll put something back to the user. For instance, we can make a temperature calculator where if the user enters in Fahrenheit, we can calculate that temperature into Celsius and return that value back to the user. We're gonna use the scanner class to read information the user inputs in the keyboard. The scanner class has several methods that we can use depending on the type of data we wanna read from the user. For instance, if we prompt the user for an age, we can store that age into an integer variable. But let's just say we prompt the user for his age and he enters his name. When he enters his name and we try to force that name into an integer data type, the program is gonna crash. We don't talk about handling these exceptions until chapter 11. Chapter 11 is outside of the scope of the first programming class. So for now, we're just gonna assume that whenever we prompt the user for an integer or for a specific data type, he's gonna enter in that information correctly. So don't worry about handling exceptions when the user enters in bad input. So the next topic we're gonna to talk about is accepting input from the user. So we're gonna start making our programs interactive. So we're gonna prompt the user for data and then we're gonna use that data to do some type of calculation or generate some type of output. Programs generally need input on which to operate. The scanner class provides convenient methods for reading input values for various types. A scanner object can be set up to read input from various sources, including user typing values on the keyboard. Keyboard input is represented by system in. The following line creates a scanner object that reads from the keyboard, right here. A new operator creates the scanner object. Once created, the scanner object can be used to invoke various input methods such as next line. The scanner class is part of the java.util class library and must be imported into the program to be used. The next line method reads all of the input until the end of line is found. See echo.java. Details of object creation and class libraries are discussed further in chapter 3. So here they give an example called echo. They declared a string variable named a message and they instantiated a scanner object that reads the keyboard. So then they tell the user enter a line of text then they use the next line method to scan the input from the keyboard and store it into the variable message. And then they output the message. Here's an example run. Enter a line of text. The user will enter, you want fries with that. And then we prompt back, you entered, you want fries with that. Input tokens. Unless specified otherwise, white space is used to separate the elements called tokens of the input. White space includes space characters, tabs, new line characters. The next method of the scanner class reads the next input token and returns it as a string. Methods such as next int and next double read data of particular types. See gas mileage.java. So here's another example of a program that uses scanner class. So they declared an integer named miles and a double named gallons in MPG. Uh, one thing to take note of is they did have to import the scanner class. Once they have the scanner class imported, they instantiated a scanner object that listens to the keyboard. Then they prompt the user to enter the number of miles. He enters a number of miles. They scan in next integer from the keyboard, store it into the variable miles. And then they ask him to enter the gallons of fuel used. He enters in as a double. Then they divide miles by gallons and store it into mpg and then they output the mpg here's a sample run enter the number of miles they entered 328 enter the gallons of fuel used they entered 11.2 miles per gallon and they give them the miles per gallon here's a simple breakdown of the scanner class up here it's the different types of constructors that you can call now we're only going to pass in system in for this course other methods that you can use is the next next line next boolean next byte next double next float next int next long next short these all return specific data types note that the next method will return a string. Next line also returns a string, but it's going to return the entire line. Next, next boolean, next byte, next double, next float, next in, next long, next short are all token scans. So it's going to return the token. Now remember, a token is delimited by space. Java is going to look for space to separate those tokens and read in that input. You can also go to the API documentation to learn more about these methods and the scanner class. I created this class so I can demonstrate the scanner object. The name of my file is scanner demo one. The name of my class is scanner demo one. I have my main method and then inside my main method, I'm going to put my programming statements. Now note that I did create an import statement. I have to import the scanner class in order to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a scanner object. 
So I created a scanner object. I have to specify the data type this variable is going to hold. So this is what we call an object reference variable. I named it scan and I'm telling Java that scan is going to hold a scanner object. And whenever we create a new object, we have to use the new keyword. The new keyword, the new keyword will tell Java to instantiate a new object of this class. Every class that we can use to instantiate an object will have constructors. So the scanner class has several constructors. One of the constructors accepts the keyboard. System dot in represents the keyboard. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a object reference variable. I'm instantiating a scanner object that is listening to the keyboard. I went ahead and created some variables. So I created a variable called name, which holds a string. So I'm going to prompt the user for a name. He's going to enter the name. I'm going to store it into this variable name. Then I created some variables to hold grades and variable to hold the average. So I'm going to prompt the user for three grades and I'm going to calculate his average. I've created a constant. Now the reason why I created a constant is because I'm going to do a mathematical equation to calculate the average. I want to use a three in my equation. Instead of having a three literal value in our coding standard, I'd specifically tell you not to use literal value use in equations and to define a constant for any value that you're going to use inside of an equation that is a literal value. So I'm going to go ahead and set up prompts for the user. The first thing I'm going to do is prompt the user for his name. So I created a prompt for the user. I prompted him to enter his name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to read his input. I'm going to read the entire line as his name. So he can enter his first and his last name, and it's all going to go inside of the string. Now what I'm going to do is just echo back out his name. I created this output to greet the user. So I'm going to take his name. His name will be stored in the variable called name. I'm going to tell him hello, whatever his name is. How are you today? And I'm using the print F percent S here for a string. So the name will go where the percent S is. Let me go ahead and run this program. Here's a prompt. I'm getting prompted to enter my name. I enter my name and then I prompt back, hello, Michael Madrigal, how are you today? I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this program. And it doesn't matter how long this line is, but as soon as I press enter, that's when that input is gonna go into the variable name. I'm gonna run this again, and I'm just gonna enter in just a number. And you can see it took that number in as a string. So we can enter any information in as a string and Java is going to accept that data as a string. It doesn't matter if it's a number or a decimal point. If we scan for next line, we're reading that data as a string. So if I were to run this one more time and put in a floating point value, Java is still treating that data as a string. So now what I want to do is prompt the user for something other than a string. I'm going to prompt the user for floats. I'm going to ask him for three grades. Then I'm going to calculate his average based on those three grades. I made three separate outputs and I'm accepting in user input. I'm asking the user to enter grade one and then I'm scanning for a float and storing it into the variable grade one. Grade one is declared as a float and I'm doing this for grade two and for grade three. Now what I want to do is take those values and calculate the average. I'm taking those three grades that the user just entered and I'm summing them all together and then I'm dividing them by three and I'm storing the result inside of this variable average. So now what I want to do is output this information to the user. Now notice that I did use parentheses here to force the order. If I did not have these parentheses, then what's going to happen in my order of operations is Java is going to perform division of grade three by num of grades and my calculation will be off. So you need to make sure you use parentheses to force the sum first. So I went ahead and created my output. Now I did change a few things. I changed the grading up here. I just told the user to please enter his grades. I'm also outputting a list of his grades here and then I'm calculating out the average. The average was calculated here and I'm outputting the average here. Let me go ahead and compile and run this program. I get prompted to enter my name. I'm just gonna put in Mike, please enter your grades. And here is the output. So grade one, grade two, grade three, and then there is my average. Now there's a lot of things that we can do here. Say we didn't want all these zeros at the end. In the previous lectures, we talked about formatting our output. So I could come over here and if I just wanted to see the first value after the decimal point, I'll just put a point one here and rerun the program into your name. And there you go, there's my output. So another thing I wanna talk about is what happens if we were to enter something other than a float when we're being prompted to enter in our floats. So when I rerun this program, I get prompted to enter in a string, which is my name. And then here I'm getting prompted to enter in a float. Now a float can be any number or a number with a decimal point, it doesn't matter. But if I were to type in my name again here and press enter, I get an exception. So what happens, this is what we call a runtime error. I asked the user for a float, but he gave me a string and then Java tried to convert that string to a float and it couldn't do it. So it threw an exception and the program terminated. And this is what we call a runtime error. Now you don't have to worry about this for this course. Whenever you get to the next programming class, we'll talk about handling exceptions. But for now, if you prompt the user for a specific data type, then you can just assume that he's going to enter in that data type.
I took the previous example and named it Scanner Demo 2 because I wanted to show you a couple of things, some problems that you can run into. So let's just say you're prompting for the user for his name, but instead of scanning for next line, you simply just scan for next. Now when you scan for next, you're doing what we call a token scan. So that means it's going to read the string separated by a space, a tab, or a new line. So you won't be able to enter a two-part name now when you do the next. So let me go ahead and compile and run this program. Okay, so I'm prompting the user for his name and I enter in Mike and then I enter in three grades and everything seems to work as it did before. But let's just see what happens if now if I'm confused by into your name and I think they mean my first and my last name. And you can see I got an exception. So this is what happened. We used the token scan to get the name. So Java read Mike. Then there is a space. So Java saw this as a separate input. So you can see here that we're actually prompting the user to enter in his grade. Java tried to take my last name and force that into my grade. Since this is a token scan, the methods that are using token scans are receiving any input after this space. My last name was applied right here on this next float. So even though we're prompting individually for this grade. When I'm doing a token scan, I was going to take the first part of this token and send it to this next and the second part and send it to the next float. So you can actually make this work to your advantage because if the user were to enter all the data on one line, this entire program would have ran and accepted the input from just one line. Let me demonstrate that. So I compiled and ran my program and I'm going to type in Mike, but this time I'm not going to press enter and I'm going to go ahead and enter my grades. Separated by space, I'm going to press enter. The program worked fine. I got these prompts but I didn't actually enter data when I got prompted. It just ran through those prompts and then it outputted my information with my average. So what happened was when I entered in my name, Java took this name for the scan of next, and then it took this 89 for the scan of next float and the 78 for this scan right here, and then the 65 for the scan right there. So I had all my information put in one line. Java just took all that information and immediately applied it to the scan and essentially just bypassed these prompts. Like it just did all this at one time because it already had the data, it calculated my average and then outputted the information. So you need to kind of be careful with this. It's just something you should know. Um, you could, could make this work to your advantage if you just prompt a user, please enter your three grades separated by space. Or if you want to just prompt them individually, you can do that as well. But it's just kind of an oddity that students come across and have questions about. Common problems with the scanner. Here are a few problems that students run into when using the scanner. Forgetting to import the scanner class, using the wrong method to read data. So remember next and next line is for strings. Use next int, next long, next short, next byte when reading integers, next float and next double when reading numbers with a decimal point. Note the difference between next and next line. Next will read a token as a string. Next line will read the entire line. There is another issue that students run into with the scanner class, and this happens when you do a line scan right after a token scan. It's an odd behavior that trips up students. By default, a token scan will read information separated by space and the end of line character, but will not include the end of line character or the space in the scan. So the line scan will see the end of line character left by the token scan and read it as input. This issue is just like if the user did not enter data and simply pressed enter. I created this table to talk about the problem so we can actually understand what's going on. So this is when you have a line scan right after a token scan. So in your code, you're gonna have some code here and then you're gonna prompt the user for his age and then you're gonna scan his age, which is a token scan. This is a token scan right here, next int. Then you're gonna prompt him for his school and then you're gonna do a line scan. Now the reason why you do line scan for the school is because the school could have multiple words like Northwest Vista College. So you need something that was gonna accept space. So in the actual command prompt, the first prompt that they're gonna see is in enter age. So the user is going to then say, okay, well, I'm going to enter my age. I'm 19. And then he's going to press enter. This is the symbol I'm using for enter. So what's going to happen is the code is going to say, okay, well, I prompted the user and I want the integer. The user entered the integer. I'm going to take this 19 and I'm going to use it right here. Then the code is going to prompt the user to enter into school and wait for the next line. But Java is going to see that there is a next line because the previous token scan did not include the end of line here. So Java is going to think that the user made an input entry. It's going to use the end of line character as input and school is going to be set to an empty string. So the entry for school is just like if the user entered in no data. I'll type up an example of this. I created this class called scanner demo problem. The name of my class matches the name of my file. I have my main method. I imported my scanner class and I instantiate a scanner object and I have a variables for name, for school, and for age. I'm gonna prompt the user for his name. So I prompt the user for his name and I store the information using the next line into the variable name. Now I'm gonna prompt him for his age. 
I'm using printf to prompt the user for his age. I'm using nextint to store the user input into age. But remember, this is a token scan. Now I'm going to prompt the user for the school that he's attending. Now I'm prompting the user for the college that he's attending. I'm using next line, which is not a token scan. It's going to grab the entire line. And then I'm making this nice output. His name is this many years old and is attending the college that he entered. Now let's see what happens when we compile and run this program. So compile, run, asking for a name. I'm going to put Tim. Tim is 19 and the program finished. You can see that I was trying to prompt him for his college right here. And if you look at the output prompt, his college should go after attending, but there's nothing there. So Java sees school as an empty string. Now the reason why it sees school as an empty string is because when I entered 19, that was a token scan, but I press enter and I left that end of line character behind. So the next line scan will take that end of line character and use it as a blank string. There's a couple of ways to prevent this problem. The first way is to swap the order in which you're prompting the user. Perhaps do your line scans first and then do your token scans. But in this case, I've already set up my prompts and I like prompting the user for his age right after I ask him for his name. So I can release this endline character by just calling scan.nextline and not saving that input. So I'm just gonna do a scan.nextline. So I created this scan.nextline. It's gonna handle the endline character. Notice how I'm not capturing what I scanned from the keyboard. Then I'm gonna do a line scan for the school and store the school information into the variable school. Let me go ahead and compile and run this program. So now I'm getting prompted for the name. I'm gonna put Tim, age 19. Now when I press enter, that end of line character is going to be handled by this next line that I'm not capturing. Press enter, please enter your college. Press enter and you can see the output is what I expected. So this is a common problem that students will run into. There's a couple of ways to handle it. First way is just reordering the way you prompt the user for information. Or if you run into a situation where this is happening, you can just do something like this where I just have a line scan that is going to handle that in the line character and then you can just continue on as normal.